How's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and today we're going to do forms in Vanilla React. And when I say Vanilla React, I'm talking about no additional packages to help us get the job done. Now, you may be required to do that if, if maybe your form is complicated, you have many fields, many validations. But for a lot of forms, you've just got a couple fields and validations are pretty simple, so you can just handle this yourself. So, to get started, we've got this component here that I've called Vanilla Form and I've pre-filled in a form element. So with forms, you wanna deal with three things. You wanna talk about getting the data from the input fields, validating that data, and then submitting that data or processing that data when the user submits the form. So in terms of getting the data, we're gonna start by just adding an input field to this form. So we'll give it a type of text, we'll give it a name of name, and we'll just put it like that for now. And let's look. Let's make it look a little bit nicer. We've got uh, class name. Uh, I believe I've got input row, which will give it a little bit of padding. And we'll give this a label. So we'll do for name, and we'll say name. Uh, because I said for, I have to give it an ID of name, like that. And let's just see how it's looking. Okay. So we have this form here. And it's right at this point, it's basically an HTML form and we haven't reactified it at all yet. So if we think back to step one, that's getting the data. So we're gonna use what's called a controlled component. And what that means is basically, again, three steps. Step one is we're gonna listen for events when the user types. We're gonna basically capture that data and put it into state. That will call, cause React to re-render and we can display the value that the user has entered. So the first thing we need is some state. So because we're gathering the user's name, we'll put that into something called name and we'll call this set name to update it. And we'll say react.useState and we'll start it as an empty string. So we now need to listen for events as the user types. And for that, we'll use the onChange event. So on change, we can pass a function to it and we receive the event. So event, this is um, like a JavaScript um, on change event. Let's actually, we'll take a look. So console.log, it's actually a special one that React sort of handles for us, but it's very similar to the ones you get in standard React. Oop. And it's not for, it's HTML4. Okay, so as I type, it's calling this um, event every time, and it's it's a synthetic event. This is like a spe special React thing. But what's important is that it maps to an input event. And the important things that we want to basically extract from this event is a target. So what is the target? So if I type again, this is the actual input element itself. And from this, we can get its value. So as I type, now I'm seeing the value that the user's entered into this input. So now that I have the value, what I can do is instead of just console.logging it, I'll call set name every time to put the user's value into our state. So up until this point, it's being stored in state, although we can't really see it yet, but this isn't a controlled component yet because we're just capturing the event or the data and putting it into state. We now need to display this state inside of our element. So for this, we can say value is equal to the name that the user has entered. So the flow basically works. Every time a user presses a letter, it triggers this on change event. We capture the event here and we access its target, that's the input element itself, we get its value, and we call set name to put this value into state. That will cause the uh, React to re-render this component, and now we can take this name and set it as our value here in our input. So now as I type my name, this is a fully controlled component because we're taking what the user entered and we're re-rendering that as its value. So step two with forms is validation um, because we need to make sure that the input the user is entering is valid. So we'll wanna create our own validations. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called validate and it is going to receive some values. And what we're going to do is build up an errors object that will return from this. So we'll say let errors equal an empty object. And the first thing we're going to do is check to see if the name that we're eventually going to will pass up to this function is it empty? So is not values.name. So if that's the case, we're going to take our errors object and we're going to say that the name field has an error. So we'll say required field like that. And then we'll return the errors object. So we've got our validation function ready, but we haven't yet used it at all. So how does it get the values and what's it going to do with the errors object that are, that are returned? So for that, we are going to have some new state called errors. And we'll set errors like that. And we'll say that it's equal to an empty object at the beginning. So when are we going to populate the value in here? For that, we're going to use use effect. So whenever the name changes, the user enters something, we'll cause that to trigger our effect, which we'll use uh, to call validate and set our error values. So we'll say react.useEffect. So use effect, you pass a function to it, which is called anytime the effect is produced. Uh, I've got a video series on the use effect hook. So I'll link to that if you're uh, seeing this for the first time or want some more details. So to use effect, you pass a function. And what we're going to do in our function is call validate. And we're going to pass in our object, which is this values here. And we're going to pass in name. So that's how I'm able to access values.name. Name here is coming from our state name. And what are we going to do with what this function returns? We're going to pass that to the set errors state setter to um, have that update our errors in state. So with use effect, you need to pass uh, an array to basically tell it when to trigger this effect function to be run. So the only value right now we want it to be triggered on is when the name changes. So we'll pass that in here as our second argument. Okay. So right now we're not displaying the errors anywhere. Let's actually just put it into json.stringify so we can keep an eye on it. So it starts out as a required field because it's empty and as I type this value here disappears. When I clear it out it's required again. So every time the name value changes in state it's causing our validate function to run via the use effect hook and then we're just displaying this here. We can get a little bit fancier by um, by displaying the error in a nice way. So I imported this error component. Uh, it's pretty small. It just basically checks if there's an error message to display, put it in this div and change the class a little bit. So we'll use that here just below the input. So we'll say error message. And we may have multiple fields. Um, so we'll want to get the error message for errors.name. So now we can come back and it starts out as a required field and as I type it displays all good. Required field again. We could also use the errors object to add a class um, conditionally to this input that might change the look and feel of it a little bit. So we'll say class name is equal to. So if errors.name is truthy we will add a class called has error otherwise just leave that as null. So now when it's invalid, it will be read. And as soon as I start typing, it will just turn into a normal input field without a class. So if step one in forms is getting the user's data, which we did via a controlled component, getting the value here, updating our state. Step two is validating the user input, which we did every time the, um, the form values change. 
Step three is actually submitting the data to a server or via like using Fetch or Axios to post the data or using a mutation in GraphQL. And we're going to do that by overriding the onSubmit um, event on the form. So what onSubmit gives us is a function that will be called and it gives us the event. This is a HTML form submission event and the first thing we're going to want to do is prevent the default. So what is the default that we're preventing? If you think about a form in standard HTML outside of React, it wants to submit the information to wherever you have the action. So the action would typically be a URL that you're posting the data to, um, which you would control by setting the method to post. Or if it was more of a, a query that you want to be performed, like you're searching something, you would have this as a get. But we don't need any of that in here because we're going to handle this ourselves in the on submit event. So we've prevented the default, the standard form submission. And now what we want to do is maybe we want to run the validation one last time just to make sure everything's okay. So we can just call validate ourself and we'll say if um, validate and we'll pass in these values again like that. And because we've used this twice now, why don't we just put this actually into a variable like this. And now what we can do is instead of passing name here, we can pass values and we can just straight up pass values like that. Simplify the code a little bit. So we can say const um, new errors, just because I don't want it to interfere with this variable. So we'll validate the values. And we want to check if there are any in here. This is just like a one last check to make sure. Um, because maybe the user submitted the form via like enter or a button. And for some reason, it didn't run the effect in time. So we just want to do this to be sure. So we'll say, we'll get the keys of this object. And we want to check to make sure that there's no keys on this errors object that was returned from the validate function. So we'll make sure that the length of the keys of this object are zero. And if they're greater than zero, what we'll do is we'll just return and stop the form from doing anything. So at this point, we know that everything is valid. We've prevented the default. We've done like one last validation. And now we can actually do something with the data that we're submitting. So in this case, we'll just trigger um, like a delay as if we were posting the data to a server by using um, set timeout like that. So we'll have it run in 500 milliseconds. And what we want to do is simply um, alert to the browser and we'll stringify the values. Um, we don't want to relate a replacer, but we're going to add some spacing so that it looks nicer like this. Okay. Am I doing something wrong? No. Okay. So as I enter this in and, oh, I don't have a button. Let's add that. So class name input row. So we'll add a button of type submit and we'll say submit here. So I come back, I enter Lee and I submit. And in 500 milliseconds, it pops up the name which contains Lee. So if I wanted to stop the user from maybe double clicking this, I can disable this button. So to disable the button, I need to know if it's submitting or not. So I'll create another state and we'll call it submitting and we'll give it a setter function called set submitting. And we'll default it to false. So the first thing we want to do is basically control when this value is true or false. So in here, what we'll do is we'll say set submitting to true. And then after we've gotten our response back from the server here, we'll set it to false again. So 
we're toggling this to true, then back to false, and how are we going to use this? Well, when submitting is true, we want to disable this button. So we can actually come back here and say disable, and we'll pass it submitting. So that when this is true, this button will be disabled. So if I come back here, maybe that was a warning from before. No. What's it saying? Receive false for a non... Oh, it's disabled, right? There we go. Okay. Disabled, not disable. So now when I enter this in, it does the validation. I submit it. You can see here the button is disabled. It's sort of grayed out. And then it's enabled again. So the last thing we want to do is basically reset the form so that it can be used again. So all we have to do for resetting the form in a controlled uh, component scenario is just set name back to its default. So we can just come here and set it back to an empty string like that. And this will trigger a change in name, which will trigger this effect to run again. So it will automatically reset the errors back, for, back to like the default again. So if we come here, we enter the name, we submit it, it shows us the value, pretending to post it to a server, and then it resets the form and enables the submit button again. So you can see that it's already starting to get up to 65, 66 lines of code. Um, this is just with a single field. So you can imagine as the form gets more complicated, that's when you might want to reach for something like Formic. But if it's just one or two fields, you might be uh, good enough just using vanilla React. And again, the three steps to a form are, you need to get the user's data, what they've entered into the fields. We did that using this state here with the on change event, and then displaying what they entered here using a controlled component type of situation. We validated the user input. So we created a little validate function, which is called every time any of the form input values change, and we store the errors in the state here. And then we use this errors object to add or remove a class from the input, and also to display an error message underneath the input. And thirdly, if everything's valid, you want to submit the data to a server or sort of process it in whatever way. So we used the form on submit event. We prevented the default, which is the the typical form action and method submission by handled by the browser. We revalidated the data just to make sure everything's okay. And then we controlled a Boolean state value, whether the form's submitting. And after we posted to the server, pretending with set timeout, we put up alert, set this Boolean submitting back to false, and then we reset the form's values so that the user can enter in the next value. And that is how you do forms in Real uh, vanilla React. Blah. Cool. Hope you liked it. Take care. Bye.